Hi, Big Daddy. I couldn't go home without telling you why I didn't come to your funeral. Same old reason. I was being selfish, thinking too much about how I was feeling instead of coming out here to pay my love and respect. You know, going through those photograph albums yesterday with Dorothy, I realized that I haven't always been easy to love. Oh, I was a horrible child. Rebellious and difficult. But you always made me feel loved and beautiful. Even when I did make it hard on you. I know I haven't always given much back, honey. I was always so worried about me. I couldn't even come and see you when you needed me before you died. Because I was all caught up in that old silly ball. There is no excuse for that. Although... I was the ball queen. Did I tell you that? Oh, that's right, I did. Well, here I am, all caught up in myself still, fighting with Virginia and the rest of the family when we ought to be comforting each other. I just feel like such a fool. I would give up everything that I ever thought meant anything to me. If I could have one moment with you. I don't know if love can help you wherever you are, but if it can, honey, you've got it. Big Daddy, I do love you so much. I just wish there was some way I could know you're hearing what I'm saying. Blanche. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. The cab driver says we better get going if we want to make our plane. Big Daddy, you remember Dorothy. Hello. <laughs> honey, I have to go now. You're in my prayers. You take good care of him, Mama, you hear me? I love you. I love you both. I'm nobody's little girl anymore. What's your point? <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking about Edna. Edna? Your wife. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess I just can't take a hint. There's some things about Salvador I still have trouble talking about. Of course... Other things I'm not allowed to talk about unless I want the Scarpoli family to put out a contract on me. <laughs> hey, I, I made up that last part trying to lighten the moment. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Alvin. Don't cry. That's okay. You cry all you want. But they don't put lipstick on my teeth. Don't worry. I'll take them out and check them personally. <laughs> well, I guess uh, it's time to go. You will hold my hand? Sure, I will. I'm so glad I don't have to go alone. Uh, you remember how we met? Yes. About eight years ago, we shared a room in the hospital. You had the heart scare. I was the gallbladder. They gave you my sponge bath by mistake? You ate my jello. It was a horrible little room. We couldn't wait to get out of it. Because we wanted to live. Yes, I remember. Remember better. Remember life. I don't have much of one. I'm not like you. You live with friends and family. Holidays and warmth. I... Hear the silence. We'll talk. We'll talk all the time. You can come over Thanksgiving, Christmas, every Friday night. I may not be there, but you can always talk to Rose. <laughs> no, I want to go. Lydia looked so peaceful. We're not in this life for peace. You're crying. No, I'm not. I don't cry. I can see your tears. And I can see yours. You know what that tells me? What? 
You're not as ready to die as you think you are. You still want to live, kid. Some kid. I don't know what to do. That's the point. If you're not sure, you can't change your mind tomorrow. You wanted me to be here for your death. How about letting me be here for your life? Like a friend. <coughs> like a best friend. say anything. Oh, I mean, what can you say about seven years of fights and laughter, secrets, cheesecake? Yeah. Just that uh, it's been very, um, well, it's been an experience that I'll always keep very close to my heart. And that these are memories that I'll wrap myself in when the world gets cold and I forget that there are people who are warm and loving and... We love you too. <laughs> oh. I miss you. I miss you. Oh. 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 You will always be a part of us. Oh. Oh. Your friendship was something I never expected at this point in my life and I could never have asked for a better surprise. That's how we feel, too. I have to go. Dorothy, is this goodbye? I love you. Always. Lucas is waiting. You're angels. All of You'll always be my sisters. Always. I'll wait. You know what I think? That reindeer really know how to fly? <laughs> That's enough, Blanche. I spent a lot of time at that grief center, and I know what I'm talking about. Sophia, is that $47 the only thing that's bothering you? It's a big part of it. What else? The dress thing. Why didn't she stop the dress thing? He's been doing that all his life. That didn't start with me. Oh, so it's my fault. Are you worried that people will think it's your fault, Sophia? Oh, it's not like having a war hero in the family. <laughs> Angela, was he a good husband? Yeah. A good provider, a good father for your children? Yeah. Okay. Now, I know no one wants to hear one of my stories right now. That's usually a pretty safe bet, Rose. But you need to know about my cousin Ingmar. Ingmar was different. He used to do bird imitations. Oh, what's wrong with that? Well, let's just say you didn't want to park your car under their oak tree. <laughs> Ingmar 
was different. His mother used to say he brought shame to the house of Hassenpfeffer Stuhledunker. <laughs> anyway, you're all wondering where this story is going, so I'll skip the part where he ran up the stairs and down the stairs and up the stairs and down the stairs and up the stairs. Rose, you're not skipping. <laughs> Sorry. The point is, it was shame that kept Aunt Katrina from loving slow Ingmar. And it ruined her life. Oh, don't let that happen to you, Sophia. Let go of the shame. So what if he was different? It's okay that you loved him. I did love him. He was my son, my little boy. But every time I saw him, I always wondered what I did, what I said. When was the day that I did whatever I did to make him the way he was? What he was, Sophia, was a good man. My baby is gone. Oh, so...